Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Burrito bonus episode. My name's Darian. My name's Landon. And today we got a plethora of stuff for you. We got Marvel, we got DC, and we got games. You name it, we got it. Let's talk. Landon, I know we're supposed to be on break. We taught everyone we'd go on break, but there's been way, there's been way too much new, big news that we got to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Bit, two, two major ones. Um, yeah, it, this was kind of my call because we were I was back and forth with it. But, I mean, these two things were so huge. One of them we can't even talk about. I mean, we'll say it. We'll say it happened, but we out of respect, we won't mention the details. Yeah, we'll yeah. so uh, mention what came out of it, but we won't talk about what it looked like. Exactly, exactly what it was. Um, very sad news, though. That, that that's for sure. Um, on both fronts, I guess. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, but I'm hey, I'm glad we're doing a we're doing a quick one. So you know, no, yeah. what's the harm? bonus episode um this is i'm still not 100 sure if i'm gonna call this episode number one 110 or if i'm just gonna call it bonus episode um Can't wait for that play. <laughs> the bonus episode playlist but uh it's not gonna go into a separate playlist. um I mean, we'll see yeah that uh yeah i guess i could add, i guess i asked how have you been it's been a week I mean, it's good. We're currently, you know, currently Christmas. Well, not currently. Oh, yes. Merry Christmas, because this will be out on Christmas. Yes. So I guess a little little Christmas present, I guess, from yeah, us. Yeah, Christmas. Yes, sure. Why not? Yeah, bonus Christmas thing episode. <laughs> um, hey, I mean, I was, I mean, it's, you know, I'm excited. You know, I'm, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited what I got my girlfriend. I won't say what it is because she's currently in the room with me. But um but I got I got something pretty good. I'm very hyped for her to open it up and you know be be surprised. You wanna know what I did but, yesterday, Christmas related, and this also relates to you. This relates to me. I looked up, I was like, how much is, I wonder if someone's selling one of those Spider Man game stops to like things that were hanging from the ceiling that one you wanted. Yeah. And I looked it up and I found him selling and I was like, if it's cheap, I'm gonna buy it for him for Christmas. And it was five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? Yeah. You see why I, want I was it. like, never mind. <laughs> He's like getting it. I, I wanna buy it for him so he can stop pestering him as GameStop employees. I'm like, no, he his best bet's to get GameStop to give him one. Like that's crazy. I didn't realize Standies went for that much. Oh dude, there's like I mean it's I mean, like five hundred. I can imagine maybe like one fifty, but like for a bunch of piece of cardboard. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, hey, I, mean, I I want one bad. I I've been begging. Just hope I can come across it. Hey, we got him on eBay oh. for five hundred dollars. So. That's what they tell me. <laughs> what they tell me? Um. But yeah, we got some stuff to talk about today, so let's not waste any more time before we get on into it. Um, starting off with What If episode Season 2, Episodes 1 and 2, um, which are out right now. Um, they're releasing one a day, so let's see. We're recording this at 10.50 uh, p.m. on December 23rd. So, in literally, what, five? Five hours, four, five, four, five hours. Um, another episode comes out. Um, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I don't know what with us Marvel fans, we get excited about the idea of getting something daily. But when it happens, it's just like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> it's <laughs> like I, it's only because like I watched one episode. Like I watched the episode last night, and mm. uh, or it was like. I was up at like three in the morning, so I watched it when it dropped. Yeah. And um I look at my phone right after and flip for tomorrow's episode of what if season I'm like, just watch it's like it just like throws me for a loop. We've never had it like like released like this before. It's only ever been like all in one day or once a week. But this is like Yeah, it's very I, I mean, I, I mean, hey, what if I, I I always like what if, so it's not. I mean, you know, I ain't complaining too much. I did read that um, they plan on keeping the show going for as long as they have ideas for it. 
because um, I mean, they want they want it to be a flagship it, series. I mean, what if you know? What if it's pretty easy to do? I mean, why not? Yeah, and from what I've seen, the first two episodes, uh, they they, they they've approved. Let's see, oh, definitely uh, uh, animation and story, and actually, I'd say more interesting ideas than anything else. Yeah. Um, first episode was. Oh, let me look at the title of this episode. Hang on, let me pull up. Um, oh, my controller's dead. Never mind. Let me just go in here then. Okay, let's see. What is season two? The first episode is called something. Hang on. Okay, yeah, here it is. The first episode is called. Wait. Oh my. I don't even know. What if Nebula joined the Nova Corps? Is that it? Pretty yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I didn't. I had to just remember that because Google's not helping. Um, this is the episode that I was least interested in because I just didn't really get get the. I don't not like get get the appeal, but just like I didn't get what the story could be with that and actually make it interesting. Um. But honestly, the story itself isn't interesting but what they do the way they tell the story is what yeah, makes it a, it's um it's like blade runner um is what i could say it's really like a lot like blade runner <laughs> the first episode um yeah. she's like a space cop um she's solving a murder yondu's dead right first beginning of the episode yeah. um and I mean, she goes out and she saw them ready to be some Howard, some Howard the Duck action going on there. Yeah, always, right. always, down, always down for more Howard, Howard the Duck. Yeah, they get him a lot in this episode. Um, so he's there, Korg and uh, somebody else. No, it's Korg and Howard the Duck. I think are the main ones. And um, the villain from Captain Marvel is in it too. The guy I can't remember his name. Yon Rog, I think, or something. Yeah. Um, he's in it. Talk about a really forgettable villain. Remember when he showed up, I was like, oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I remember him. Do I though? <laughs> oh yeah. I, yeah, I had to like really like I had to like look him up. But that's how much I did so much I forgot about him. Um he he was um he was there and it's really just them trying to solve this thing. Ronan's coming. The whole point is um Ronan the accuser got so much more powerful than Thanos, or like power hungry or whatever, that he killed Thanos. Yeah. And uh, I guess using the power stone. And killed Gamora along with him and left Nebula floating out in space. And that's when the Nova core found her. Um, so they're trying... So there's a sh shield around the planet and they're... Um, apparently someone's trying to open the shield and let Ronan in. You find out that it's the leader of the Nova core, uh, and all that, it was a it was a pretty good episode. I just thought it was a um, her first episode. I liked it better than the first episode for the first season, which was the um, oh. Captain Carter episode. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Yeah. Um, and it also has a lot has a lot to do with the new animation. Uh, I really do like the way it's done. It reminds me a little bit of um, and now it's not the same like design quality. It's I do Clone Wars a little bit in the way it that it's animated, but not like the look of it. It's hard to explain. No, 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 I get that. Um, because this looks more like a comic book. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, um, definitely the I do want to point out the the biggest episode I'm looking forward to is the um, the um, the Doctor Strange one. The finale, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm hyped for that because that was like my favorite season. Everyone says the final episodes of the season are really good. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're not going to review it here because we do have an extra beef coming out where we're going to review the whole season. So, um, that is going to be um sometime at the beginning of the year. Uh, but right now we're just gonna kind of we just that's touched on it a little bit. Um, we'll get to the second episode now, which is what if uh, what if Peter Quill attacked. Yeah, what if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Uh, this is a what if of Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. Again. 
it was the second. So both of them are Guardian stuff. Yeah. Um, based in the eighties, so we get the eighties Avengers in this one. Uh, Peter Quill, uh, under the influence of ego, comes down and destroying Earth and taking it, basically going to take it over for the what's it called the um expansion I think is what he called it. Um, where he like those plants take over the planet. Um. Anyway, but we were there, and they need help. Um, the Earth needs help defending against Peter. And so Peggy Carter and Howard Stark are there, and they bring together a team. Uh, Bill Foster, which is Lawrence Fishburne's character from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, I hope he remembers that he's in a Marvel project now. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, but Bill Foster's there as... Uh, oh my gosh, what's this hero? Goliath, that's his name. Um, King T'Chaka, so uh, T'Challa's dad. Bucky's there as the Winter Soldier. Dr. Wendy Lawson, the lady from Captain Marvel. And Hank Pym, young Hank Pym, who brings hope with him. But she has, like, the strangest role in this episode. And she's just there, and she almost ruins everything. And then at the end, she just, like, is part of the team. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, she made her spot, I guess. <laughs> Uh, they go to Coney Island. All that Thor shows up. I thought this was really this was very unexpected. Mm. Uh, I didn't expect Thor to show up. Oh yeah, yeah, no, not at all. His entrance was pretty cool. It was like, oh yeah, it yeah. goes in. The oh, lightning yeah. striking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, cool. Hope they capture Quill. Hope frees him after they talk and they travel to Missouri. Um, the team Ego shows up to find his son. The team are holding him back. Um. They find Quill at uh, his mom's grave. Stuff. Pim's talking to him, trying to talk him. Bucky, who is still being talked to by the Russians, that was an interesting twist too. Um, where the Russians were telling him to kill Peter, and then Howard Stark stopped him from that. They mentioned Tony a few times in this. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Howard reminds uh Bucky of Steve Rogers, and it stops him. Ego overwhelms all the heroes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Pym and Quill show up, and they... You have a recreate, a very... This is where the episode went a little downhill for me. Because they show up, and within a matter of, like, 20 seconds, you go from, like, Peter and Ego having a this relationship and all this stuff, to him going, I hate you, I knew you would always turn out to be a disappointment. I'm like, what? All right. <laughs> um, it, They basically took the ending of Guardians... Two and condensed it into less than twenty seconds of scene with no um, anything with it. Yeah, um, but they defeat him, and the team joined by Goose at the Captain Marvel and the Marvels. Um, they set out to go to Ego's planet, um, and that's where the episode ends. Um, I like the first episode more. Oh yeah, I, I agree. I I like the '80s Avengers, but I don't. And you know, the concept is cool, but I think it just had really weird pacing issues. It should have been at least five to ten minutes longer. Yeah, I I I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Um. I was just seeing this. Let me see if this who's Fred. Oh. Fred Tadascure is um he's who is he voiced? I know that name. Fred he voices Groot in what if he says he's voiced Hulk, Holstag, and Beast, as well as Solomon <laughs> Grundy. In uh, he voiced the Hulk in multiple Marvel projects. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and Avengers Assemble. Um interest okay. And apparently, some other stuff. Apparently, he voices. Oh, he voices a character in Ratchet and Clank too. He did the voice of Groot. Oh, huh, okay. I knew that wasn't. Um, what's his name? Vin Diesel. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, have you seen the news? No. What? What's going on? Uh, he's being accused of sexually assaulting an assistant during the filming of uh, Fast and Furious Five. Oh, right. Are you kidding? No. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I did not hear about this at all. I am Groot. That's all I'll say. Um, oh, that's crazy. I, you know what? Now you mention that, oh, I, I remember hearing something about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about it. He's denied it, so I, I think. Well, I hope he would. Like, yeah, man, I did it. <laughs> oh, okay. all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, next episode of What If is um, What If Happy Hogan Save Christmas? So that's tomorrow. Um, Christmas Day is What If Iron I'm, Man Crashes into the. I don't that one. I'm, I'm yeah. to see. They released a clip for it earlier. It's got our OG Avengers in it. I, I, I ain't gonna play I'm just gonna And just some Justin Hammer and the Hulkbuster. That's the best part. Um, yeah, after that, there's What If Iron Man Crashes to the Grandmaster. What if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? What if Kahori reshaped the world? What if Hela found the Ten Rings? What if the Avengers assembled in 1602? And what if Strange Supreme intervened? Um, so yeah, episode fours are normally the, the best one, and that's the Iron Man Grandmaster one, so we'll see. The Mad Max Marvel episode. I am excited. Yeah. Um, that was those two episodes of What If. We'll review them. Uh, on the extra beef. Okay. Um. Also, good to see the Watcher back. That's fun. Yeah. The, who plays him exactly? Jeffrey Wright. Always... Commissioner Gordon. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Yeah, he kills it every time. Commissioner Gordon. Um. I just can't. I, every time I see him, I'm like, "That's Gordon." That's. Nice. Um. Okay, let's uh talk about news. Yeah. Um. Okay. First here, the first trailer for Deadpool three is rumored to be releasing during the Super Bowl on February eleventh, twenty twenty four. Um. I'll be there. I, I, I yes, will be. Watching. I will as well. Uh, I'm ready for that. I mean, it's gonna be a teaser trailer though, because what February, March, April, May, June, July. That's five months. So it's probably gonna be a teaser trailer, and then we'll get. Like a couple months later, we'll get a full on trailer. You think so? So it comes in what? Deadpool comes out in June? Deadpool comes out in July. Oh, it does it? July, yeah. 26th, I think. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. I don't Let me prove it. it. What do you mean? Prove it. Go pull it up right now. I don't believe it. I, I Deadpool 3 comes out July 26th, 2024. That's too long, man. Well, <laughs> Make it shorter. It's only seven months away. That's too long. Well, you know how long it is until the next DCU movie? 25? Yeah, but you know how long that is? Not that long. 525 days. Yeah, but one has Wolverine and another one just has Superman. Another has Superman. What do you mean? <laughs> Only uh, has... I, I like Logan. Fair. Um, okay. Yeah, that's happening. Let's talk about Jonathan Majors. Uh, last time... We talked about the update to the case, which was um, uh, the all the information that had come out, and there was a verdict that was going to be made. The verdict was made. Um, he has been counted guilty on two of the four, or was it? Oh gosh, let me look. I I want to make sure I'm getting this right. It it, it was it was. Three. I know one it was three or four. Yeah, I know definitely. I know one of them was definitely. It was two. He got on two of them, um, for third degree reckless assault and guilty of in harassment, and this is all based off of um, her him putting her back of the car. Um, that's just, like when he, you see it, like he kind of tosses her into the car. That's all that. Um, now, apparently, he's being urged to appeal this from a lot of other, um, uh, um, what am I trying to say? A lot of other, uh, lawyers and stuff, uh, because apparently he has a good, uh, chance of winning it. Yeah. Because the harassment is not that strong of a charge. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. But, um, that won't mean much because Marvel, uh, made the decision. Immediately after, uh, um, they were ready. They had the tweet ready. Well, no, they don't tweet anymore. They're not on Twitter. Um, which is dumb. Marvel left Twitter. 
When? When did this happen? Marvel Studios is no longer on Twitter. Their their when account did... is on Twitter, but they don't post up there anymore. When was the last time they posted? Oh, uh, let me look. Because they're only on Instagram and everywhere else now. Let's see. Marvel Studios. Last time they posted... Oh, I was lied to then. Was it just Marvel? Wait, Marvel Studios is still posting now. But I I read the other day that they hadn't posted in a long time. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. The last time they posted was... Hang on. It's before all the what-if stuff. Yeah, so they don't post much. Ah, uh, okay. If at all. I know they post, a, like, every day on Instagram, because all I get is notifications. Marvel Studios posted something, and I'm like, they never don't... They never not post stuff. I don't know. It's like 12 posters for what-if. All right. Um, but yeah, Kang uh, will no longer be played by Jonathan Majors, um, which... Was expected but unexpected. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what goes on. It's it sucks because I mean, I mean he was such a good actor. Oh but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it it's rough. It's. Well, I mean, what can you do? You know. I mean, yeah. it, just because like yeah. he, you are right. He was great. He was, you know. He he actually gave Thanos almost a run for his money. Every time I saw him, he was always great. So, yeah. and we only got to see him three different versions of him, or actually, we got to see like hundred thousand different versions of him in that one post credit scene. But, um, I think the ending of Loki does kind of set it up to where they could do something different with Kang, maybe recast him, um, with Loki's new mate timeline or whatever. Yeah, but um, we'll have to see. But yeah, that is the update for Jonathan Majors. He's out as Kang. Recasting is probably imminent. All right. Um, all right. Wait, wait, Here wait, we go. Do you think we will see a... Uh, when we will see a... Uh, a um, an actor change? Like, you know... Uh, it's going to be soon. Because yeah. they're pro- they probably are already on it. Yeah. They probably already had their idea for who it could be. Um, but yeah, let me check the time of the meeting because it didn't tell me. Okay. Um, according to Daniel RPK, Marvel Studios are officially talking to writers for the MCU X Men reboot, which we know already. And for now, Magneto will not be involved in the X Men project. Um, he apparently is being saved for a Brotherhood of Mutants project. I'm fine with that. Magneto not being like the first, um, First bag up. Yeah. yeah. Um Brotherhood Mutants being uh Magneto, Juggernaut, Sabretooth, Toad. I can't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> am I forgetting anybody? I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Deke is usually in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's Deke. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see a show. I wouldn't I don't think it should be a movie, but I think it should be a show. And I'd I'd like to see that. You think that depends uh, on how Thunderbolts d- does? Probably, yeah. Um, yeah. Which Thunderbolts is supposedly going to get an R rating depending on how well Echo and Deadpool do this year. Which, I mean, Deadpool's already going to make probably a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, there's no world... I think there's no world where Deadpool 3 does not make a billion. Or at least hits right there at it. Oh, yeah. yeah if, it that, does, that, if it doesn't, then I'm convinced that I, I'm going to get on board the superhero fatigue train. Oh yeah, is um, that Grand Day like the most like craziest idea out there? You know, like yeah, what if we? But it's like a cool like, especially it's what we... everyone wants. Oh yeah, it's like it's something everybody's wanted since like this is the new No Way Home. Oh set. When, when did X Men Origins Wolverine come out? Oh gosh, oh nine. Yeah, I think so. So over, you know, over a decade. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Brotherhood of Mutants project is happening. Uh, also, according to Daniel RPK, we do know who the villain of the X Men project is going to be. 
And who will that be? Uh, the top contender to become the main villain for the MCU X Men project is none other than Mister Sinister. All right. Played by Troy Baker. No, I'm, kidding. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna explain that. All right. Um, it's a joke. But yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. I think that's all for that news, Mister Sinister. Yeah, um, hey. I, I I'd like to see Mojo. <laughs> Mojo. Yeah, I, the, think... I think I'd like to see him. Sure. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they want to see Mojo in a life. You know, Mojo's he can literally trap people in TV. Get him yeah, going I... against Wanda, and she'll get trapped in the sitcom again. Yeah, I mean, no, wrong. Mojo's cool, but I just never it, it just never occurred to me like, oh yeah, that's what I want. Um, that's that. Let's see here. Uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah. Let me check the news. I mean, the time real quick. Ryan Gosling is reportedly in talks to join the MCU in an unknown role. I uh, I mean, first thing on everyone's minds was probably Human Torch, but you gave me that. I don't know if you saw it somewhere else or you you came up with it, but it's pretty good. And now I want it. Of him doing a uh, Johnny Storm, or sorry, uh, or Johnny Blaze. Yeah, uh, he can play either of the Johnnies. Oh yeah, any Johnny, I don't care. Yeah, um, I, something I just never thought of. I'm like, oh, I like that. Man. So yeah, I yeah, I sent I. It was a uh, concept art of him as Ghost Rider, and I want that, but I would also. Would not complain at all if it was Johnny Storm, but I'm pretty sure they've already cast the Fantastic Four, so I don't know. Um, but we'll have to see. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is reportedly also in talks for a new Marvel role. He will not be coming back as a uh, guy from Doctor Strange. Tysilius, I think that was his name. It was such a small role, like I don't think I would really even recognize. I didn't even know it was really him for like the longest time. Yeah, everyone's thinking Doctor Doom. I'm I'm cool with him. Me and Doctor uh, Doom. Yeah. Uh, what did I watch that he was in recently? Oh yeah, Indiana Jones Five. The dialogue. Oh yeah, he was in Indiana Jones Five. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's apparently in talks for a new Marvel role. Everyone thinks it's everyone thinks it's Doctor Doom. And I gotta be honest, if the Pedro Pascal's Reed thing is true, him and uh, Pedro as Reed and uh, Victor Von Doom. That, that's kind of a cool comp. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, they're kind of the same age. Yeah. I think. I don't know what to see. Um, I we have less than a minute in the meeting, but I'll go ahead and say this last, uh, this next one real quick. According to Daniel RPK, Lady Deadpool will be in Deadpool three, and she will look exactly like she does in the comics. Oh, yep. that's good. Lady Deadpool. Uh, the next few are very important, so I'm definitely going to have to in the meeting right here. So, be right back. Alright, next piece of news here, and this is something that we've heard whispers about for quite some time now. Uh, but According to Daniel RPK, a new Hulk film is in the works and officially happening with production set for early 2025. So, hello. No, no, hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, sorry, I was a little worried. Heard I had a had a thing cut off on me. There you go. So, where 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 were we talking about? Um, Hulk movie, new Hulk film oh, is in the yes. works, according to Daniel RPK, and it's set to begin production early twenty twenty five. Uh, something something that should have happened a uh, long long time ago. Well, thank you. Um, hey. You know, it'd be really cool. We got a Don't, sequel to Angley, Angley's Hulk. Oh, God. No one oh, wants God. a sequel to that mid movie. Dude, that movie is fantastic. If you don't like that movie, you just don't know what's up. You up literally there. gave it a six. Yeah. Because I see its flaws, but it is kind of the movie of the generation, though. Oh, my God. That's I'm a just hot saying. Take. It's not a hot take. It's the truth. It's the hottest take. It's not a hot take. That movie's great, and you know it. No, it's not. I'd much rather watch Incredible Hulk. 
That, that movie's good, but it's not. The movie's better. It's not Eric it's Banana. More, produ- more production quality. The whole Plus, design. And Hulk, Hulk has a neck. The whole design of the Ang Lee film looks way better. No, it doesn't. He's too yes, green it's... and he has a neck. He doesn't have a neck. Well, yeah, if you're bulky like that, you're not going to have a neck. But this is the Hulk. He has a neck. No, no, well, when you have the shoulder things, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, but this is like actually no neck. He has a neck. What are you talking about? It's like a tree stump, dude. My dude, my Hulk gets gets his balls bitten by a gamma dog. That's he's still he, he's still huffing. I can't see your guy doing that. I, I don't even like Hulk's not even my favorite character, so I can't. Yeah, so and he's one of my favorites, so I've ever so I know what's good and what's not good. Okay, you know, then I can... Hulk, yeah, no, no. You don't even you're not even a big fan of Hulk, so why 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 is your opinion No, matter? I'm not I'm also not a insane uh Angley's over- Hulk is a great movie. And it's that hard. and that and that's a fact. It is. I'm not even pull. I'm not even pulling your leg. It is. It's, it's not. good. I think you've been you've been influenced by who? By some nerd on YouTube. <laughs> what nerd on YouTube is all like? Like who on YouTube is talking about Angley's Hulk at the moment? I don't know. You are right now. <laughs> oh, I influenced myself. Is that what you're claiming? Well, right you was now? asking what nerd on YouTube's been it's talking about Angley's Hulk, and like right now, you are. You're on YouTube. Uh, I am. You got that right, and I hope I influenced other people because that movie. That movie. Hey, everyone's is, that laughing movie, at you right that now. That movie's peak. That <laughs> movie is peak. Yes, it is. We're reviewing it, and we're getting Spillman in here. Like, I'll, I'll even come up with it. You know, he ain't gonna listen. To me. I'd much I'll rather watch with... Watchmen. Not Watchmen. I mean, Spawn. <laughs> no. See. Or Watchmen. See how can you know whatever. I would much all, rather watch all Spawn that matter, because all that that's interesting. Is, is Angley's Hulk has everything it needs to be to be a superhero film, but it does it terribly, and it does it incredibly. The only what good thing is, about it is Angley's the Hulk has a better. I, I will give you a hot take. Angley's Hulk you, ha, I know has a better think. theme song than any MCU movie. That is period. That's a, theme that, song, no, yes, it you is. know I that's th- you. You I know think, that's. I think a hot it's take. a Spider-Man one, a run for its money. You know, that's a hot take because you know that Captain America theme song's pee. It's good. It's not Angley's Hulk theme. Uh, Come on. Dude, no, Doogie, listen to the Angley theme right now. Like, not here listen to it, it right. You listen to it right now. Boom, I... boom, 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 boom. It's like scary. It's like, oh my God. Like, it's a Hulk movie. Oh my God. You ain't gonna get confused. Angley's Hulk's peak. It Guardians of the winter. Galaxy theme song is better. I'd say, heck, I'd say Angley's Hulk has better Hulk scenes than both AFC movies. Any AFC Hulk's in? No, because there's that scene in the first Avengers movie of Hulk chasing, like, well, Hulk doing literally anything in the first Avengers movie is awesome. Wait, yeah, it's cool, but he ain't, uh, you don't see him throw tanks him across. Him chasing Black Widow. He literally jumps on buildings and, like, sp- destroying stuff and throwing cars at people. <laughs> Dude, my guy. Um, we're not, not used really, to talking about this. We're talking. We're, we're defending Angley's Hulk. That's what you're we're doing. defending, Angley's Hulk. I'm stating the truth of the matter, which is which is that that movie good. Sucked. That it's peak and it's a it's cinema pretty much. No, you just, you just don't get it because there's not much action in it. So you're all like, your mind can't process. If it's a if it's a Hulk movie with not much action in it, then it's not a Hulk movie. <laughs> Hulk has to have action. This is the whole he point. does. You said it doesn't have much action in it, which makes it yeah, obviously yeah, well, a major flaw. Not, like, yeah, yeah, but no, that doesn't mean it. No, it does not have much, much. The only like, good thing that movie has going for it is um, that one dude is in it. I can't remember his name at the moment. Um, well, who's the, the guy with what, the one? mustache? Oh, the Sam Elliott. Yeah, and Sam Elliott <laughs> and the comic book, the comic book um, editing type thing. Yeah, that it does. That's yeah, the only good things it has going for it. It's cool. You know what? Let's get James Gunn to make a Hulk movie, and he'll make the best Hulk movie. Okay, he probably I'll... would. Honestly, that was that was a joke, but it probably actually probably would. 
<laughs> James, just leave DC. Work on work on a whole back. Come back. Work on a Get James on the phone. The same same time Superman's been you think Hulk's been shafted? Superman's been shafted way too long. That's true. But that's all about to change. July eleventh, twenty twenty five. Superman Legacy only at the no. Just turn into the advertisement <laughs> bot for a second. Sorry, and I don't know what if happened. We, if we do end up advertising that movie, that's gonna be great. God, I would Except cry. Well, we have lucky to to the premiere. That would be so cool. Can you imagine going to the Superman premiere? Oh yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, more X Men stuff. Uh, well, for, first off, um, this Hulk movie, I don't know if it talks about it in the article we're going to read in a little bit. It might, so we'll see. But apparently, it is uh, World War Hulk um, related, and it's supposed to be like a Civil War-esque movie. So, that's that. Apparently, it, set, it, it comes off of what's set up in New Captain America, as well as um, She-Hulk and all kinds of other stuff. So, I guess we we'll have to see. I wonder, what, I wonder what took him so long to do one. I know, like... Um, I just want Angry Hulk back, which I hope we're getting. I think yeah. we are. That's what, that's what everybody's wanting back. Yeah, like, I like Professor Hulk for a little bit, but he's overstayed his welcome. He needs to go. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, he should have... I mean, Professor Hulk should have left at the end of Endgame. I feel... And got that rematch with Thanos, and then that would be yeah. the best part of the movie. Um, but yeah. All right, let's move on to the next piece of news here. It's been way too long. I'm talking about a terrible Hulk movie. All right. <laughs> um, about a fantastic Hulk movie. No, it's fantastic. Say that again. Say it. It's fantastic. Guys, I got it. Angley's Hulk. <laughs> Dude, oh, that's what, that's what, that's what's coming out. Yeah, it's gonna be just as terrible as fan. It's movies. gonna be, right. dude. They're gonna have like Gray Hulk and She Hulk in the sequel, so I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to hear you like just say that it was gonna be trash or something. That's gonna be dude. trash. No, it um, would not. Knowing the yes, it would have. Or is it just proves that he's the best Hulk? Anyway, um, several. Mutant-focused MCU projects are rumored to be in development right now, putting spotlight squarely on mutants. The Avengers will be playing a smaller role, stepping aside for the mutants to take center stage in the upcoming saga. Um, this is smart. Uh, Marvel is in a rut right now. Um, switching the with the switching of CEOs, one CEO trying to do way too much, mm. and the other one trying to fix things. Um, it they did too much and they have too many pieces on the board, I guess you'd say. Um, oh, yeah, and of, I think pretty sure. Um, I read that Kang isn't being focused on anymore, um, uh, too hard in the uh multiverse saga, but he'll be brought back towards the end of it. So build him up a little bit more in the background, mm. and um, mutants are. Well, I think like that's one thing that's going to help save them. But mutants are another big thing that like they have to get right. Oh yeah, they have to. Um, and giving them their uh, taking the event from the Avengers aside, just having mutant focused, like next saga for all extents and purposes, just be called the mutant saga. Yeah, sure enough. And. Everyone would be hyped about that. Literally, just do mutants the whole time, until like towards later you can do an, like an Avengers movie or something. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, we have some information later about what one of those mutants projects are, and it's actually pretty cool. Um. But yeah. Do you, here's my here's my question. Do you think that they'll start off with Wolverine on the team? I, I think. I think. It would be smart of them to not do that. Yeah. Um, um I did you, see one thing about this, and I don't I think this was a rumor. Dumb to do, but I, I feel like well I mean Wolverine, you know, as cool as he is, I think gets the spot too much. I want to focus on other mutants or Cyclops. you know. Yeah, like Cyclops, Beast, Jean Grey, 
Well, let me let me. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna make you very annoyed for a minute. For a minute, until I, I, it is just a rumor, so we don't know if this is true at all. And plus, it's an early draft of the script anyway, or one of the scripts that Marvel saw. Apparently, um, they want the X Men to be uh, focused on the female um, members of the team. And I am completely 100% against this only because it should be focused on both members of the team, both, like, all members of the team at once. Like, you wouldn't just focus on, like, Jean Grey and not focus on Cyclops or Wolverine or any of them. I think that's it, kind of stupid. It, it's kind of, it's a weird, um, it's a weird topic because a lot of female x-men characters are very important comic law you know you look at g i mean g gray being a very very popular one obvious choice yeah and storm is like the more like the big moral i honestly wouldn't mind if storm was like the main character but like i but cyclops i think cyclops has to be the main character i think well is it i mean sometimes storm is like sometimes xavier is like right hand man or you know right hand you know just well, all yeah you she's like fight. she's like a teacher at yeah the, she's there. School. Um, um and like yes. I'm trying, I mean Jean Grey's popular sometimes you know, especially in the nineties show, Jubilee was the big introduction yeah. to the X Men in the car in you know, X Men nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> Not confused with X Men ninety seven. Um Yeah. I mean you got like characters like Kitty Pride, um, Rogue, especially Rogue. A lot of people like her. Um, if they to make someone like the main character of an X Men like movie, it can't I mean, be. It, it can't, I, it can't or, be Rogue. I, I, yeah, it won't be. I think because I, they did that already, and you see how that ended. Yeah, um, I'd it's, say I mean, straight, up, straight up make it Storm. I mean, I think yeah, I, I, anyone needs the lead in those. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it should be or do the Jubilee route. I just, I just don't like. I just hate Jean Grey. <laughs> That's why. <what I> <laughs> I don't, I, I, I just I, don't like the idea of only focusing on one part of the team when you should be focusing on all parts of the team because they're all equally important. Yeah, and all, all yeah, very all unique and everybody. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. So that's just that though. But we'll talk about more X Men here in a little bit. Uh, Kevin Feige reportedly wants a villain from the Sony connected, disconnected, canon, non-canon, um, alternate Spider Verse universe, uh, cinematic universe to. Crossover into the MCQ. Yeah. I don't know the official name of it, so that's my name I made. Yeah, hey, it sounds whatever it is. I don't think Spider Man, hey. Sony, Marvel, disconnected, connected, Spider Verse, animated, connected. Not animated. I like it, universes. Um, now apparently, uh, if the idea is successful, the villain would have a quote cool but disheartening role. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means either. <laughs> um, I had a feeling that it was Venom, which makes sense. It does. Um, also, some people are saying Craven. Um, I don't think it would be Morbius. I hope not. I hope it's not I... Madam Web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, that's the next movie, isn't it? The Madam yeah. Web movie. And I tried oh. to save us from it, but you were like, no. <laughs> right, right. No, we're we're going. We're going. Morbius. Why can't we skip? Yeah, well, I feel like it was a bit of a mistake on our part to skip Morbius. To be to be completely honest with you, uh, I don't. <laughs> I was happy well, about. It. I know you're happy about it, but we cannot do that again. I I really. I mean, I say let's screw it. Let's do it. it means we had to watch Craven too. Yeah, we will do that with very much pride. No, we won't. <laughs> Why not? I, mean, I, I will not have pride watching that movie. Will. <laughs> I'll have tears in my eyes. You'll have, have a lot. At my watch. <laughs> um. Okay. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Venom. But yeah, more more than likely. Yeah. Um. Okay. What's next? Oh yeah, I have a Deadpool three synopsis to read. Okay. Ready for this? Have you read the synopsis for the other two Deadpool movies? I have. No, no. Why are they like funny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me pull up them on Disney Plus here. I hope they didn't change them. Because if they didn't, I'd be very mad. 
Um, let me find Deadpool one. Let me start to search it. Okay. Dead. Okay, Deadpool one's description is. Um. No, oh, they okay. Maybe they changed it. Let me try Deadpool two. See if that's the one that they did. Yeah, okay, it is. Deadpool 2 has the weird synopsis. It says this on Disney+. Plus. After surviving a near-fatal bovine attack, a disfigured cafeteria chef, Wade Wilson, struggles to fulfill his dream of becoming Miami's hottest bartender while also learning to cope with his loss of lost sense of taste. Searching to regain his spice for life as well as a flux capacitor, Wade must battle ninjas, the Yakuza, and a pack of sexually aggressive canines as he journeys around the world to discover the importance of family, friendship, and flavor, finding a new taste for adventure and earning the coveted coffee mug title of world's best lover. <laughs> I've never, I, I've never read that. I That's what it says on on um when you hit details on Disney Plus or Deadpool two. I'm gonna have to look at those. I I didn't know this was, I didn't know that was there. Yeah, That's fine. Uh, you already you know Ryan Reynolds wrote that. He did. I figured. Um, no, I said you already know he did. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Sure. Also, did you know in Deadpool two Ryan Reynolds' voice is Juggernaut? Does he? Yes, it's him with some like audio distortion, and then somebody else's voice they use too, and they combine them. Hey, it works. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let me read the plot synopsis. Um. Okay. Here it is for Deadpool three. After facing some professional setbacks while going through a midlife crisis, Wade Wilson decides to officially retire Deadpool and become a used car salesman. When his friends, family, and the whole world are at stake, Deadpool decides to bring his katanas out of retirement. He recruits an unwilling and wary Wolverine to not only fight for their survival, but ultimately their legacy. So use car salesman. Yeah, so I mean what if it, I mean what if he ain't lying? That's actually really what's that going would be, on. That'd be interesting. <laughs> um but yeah, that's that. Now let's get on to this article because this is from the good people at the Cosmic Circus. Um they report on stuff. They're very um reliable. We've talked about their stuff in the past. And now we have a, an exclusive article written on the 21st called Marvel Studios Next Story Arcs. And so we're going to read through this. Okay, so it says, Since the debut of Multiverse Saga in 2021, Marvel Studios has met its fair share of mixed reviews uh, from fans as pro projects began to roll out. Main concerns stem from Marvel's recent quanti quantity over quality approach constantly pushing out several projects at a time without providing ample time to work out their project's components adequately. This has led to subpar production among releases and projects with rough VFX, choppy editing, and sloppy writing. Um, Marvel continues with their sights set on concluding the multiverse saga with the release of Avengers Secret Wars. Some have expressed concern over how Marvel exactly plans to go about this, with so many variables constantly changing over the years. With the current state of affairs at Marvel Studios, many fans are ultimately worried about how this much how this level of uncertainty could affect the MCU. The art, this article will shed light on what Marvel plans to do throughout the next few years and how, how it will hopefully get back on track, eventually securing a positive standing with fans once again. All right. So starting off this section, introducing more mature tones in Marvel projects. So most Marvel projects are aiming for PG-13 or uh, TV-14 for movies or shows. Um, but however, Marvel is looking into not doing that anymore. And if a particular project requires a more mature tone for the story, it can be carried out appropriately. It will be granted. Echo will serve as the pilot project for this new mature approach for Marvel. While the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine film will tackle the R-rated experiences at the movies, audience reception to these projects will be critical. To other projects potentially getting the green light for a mature rating. This includes projects like Daredevil Born Again, Blade, Thunderbolts, Marvel Zombies, and other upcoming projects. So that's the first little bit here. Um, Daredevil Born Again, Blade, Thunderbolts, Marvel Zombies, all going to be mature. Um, so R-rated or TVMA. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Sounds good to me. I mean, I like it. I mean, I think that's how it should be. Uh, next, it says Marvel Studios wants quality over quantity. As we mentioned before, moving forward, Marvel seeks to carry out the quality over quantity approach that it had aimed to carry out in the past. One measure they plan to incorporate is allowing directors and writers to tell the stories they seek to tell while relaxing the need for connectivity with other corners of the MCU. 
The goal is to develop projects that are well received and can stand out on their own while also ensuring rewatchability amongst fans. Another measure Marvel will take is um, developing smaller story arcs moving forward instead of more immense epic scale sagas that need to have a degree of interwovenness between them. While it's shared universe and heroes are bound to interact with one another, these arcs will help establish boundaries between each level of the MCU, from street to cosmic and beyond. Below are just some of those story arcs Marvel has planned for the MCU moving forward. Um, first off, we'll start with Kingpin and Devil's Reign. Uh, one of the story arcs fans can look forward to in the upcoming phases of the multiverse saga is Marvel Studios' adaptation of the Devil's Reign story arc from the comics. Have you ever heard of this or read this? I have not. Okay. Well, it says what it is. And in the comics, Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, was elected mayor of New York City. His first act as mayor was outlawing heroes by declaring them vigilantes, using an army of supervillains at his disposal to rid the city of costume vigilantes once and for all. That's Devil's Reign. Okay. According to sources, Marvel Studios seeks to adapt this storyline in the MCU, mirroring much of the original comics premise. Sources have also cited the Dark Reign and Gang War storylines as references for this particular story arc. The main projects involved in the arc are Hawkeye Season 1, Echo, Daredevil Born Again, Spider-Man 4. Which matches up with what we heard about Spider-Man 4 being the kind of like a street-level Civil War type thing. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so yeah. That's um, that's that street level stuff. Uh, more hulks and World War tensions. Another story arc that will be primary a primary focus of the MCU will be the topic of world politics. The diplomatic solution of the Sokovia Accords was unsuccessful in maintaining world peace as global tensions continued to rise with the gradual increase in the number of superpowered individuals and metahuman events worldwide. Therefore, governments are actively seeking ways to counteract these potential threats moving forward. Let's get on. All right, some countries will seek materials and elements to develop weaponry capable of disarming metahumans, such as using Stark technology and exploiting elements like vibranium and adamantium. Others will turn to creating their own metahumans that are under governmental authority. The main projects involved in this story arc are Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, which I guess was like the post credit scene with what's her name. Um, turning out she she has like in the government now, uh, Sharon Carter. Yeah, yeah, Sharon Carter, yeah. Uh, She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Secret Invasion, Captain America Brave New World, and Thunderbolts. Um, according to our sources, um, their sources, Cosmic Circus, one of the critical elements in the story arc is Bruce Banner and Jennifer Walters' blood and their ability to synthesize gamma radiation that allows them to transform into a Hulk. Banner has been trying for years to keep this under wraps to ensure no one can ever become a Hulk again or use the Hulk's ability for evil or personal gain. Ultimately, Bruce Banner's efforts will fail as Marvel Studios intends to introduce more Hulks into the MCU. The first one will be introduced in Captain America Brave New World as President Thunderbolt Ross, played by Harrison Ford, who will become the Red Hulk in the film. According to sources, this will have dire consequences in the MCU story, potentially leading to a World War Hulk project down the road. This project has been described as a Civil War-style project, acting as an Avengers 4.5, in which heroes will band together to take on several Hulk threats around the globe. I like the sound of that. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Armor Wars, Ironheart, and the Iron Man Legacy is this next section. Fans of Tony Stark and Iron Man can expect his legacy to be explored thoroughly in projects such as Ironheart and Armor Wars. Initially set up as far back as Iron Man 2, the goal of this arc is to show what fans what would happen if other people got their hands on Stark technology. The, this arc has slowly developed behind the scenes following Endgame and projects such as Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Secret Invasion. Uh, the common factor among these projects has been the Department of Damage Control, initially developed by Tony Stark to handle the wreckage of Avengers battles and recover any dangerous tech for storage. Following his death, new leaders have taken up positions of power within the organization, seizing all Stark tech in their possession to counteract human and meta-human threats. Ironheart and Armor Wars will serve as the final projects in this arc, wherein each will highlight people who, were on, who will honor Stark's legacy by using his technology and developing similar tech for good. In contrast, others will seek to harm his legacy by using his technology for personal gain. We have learned from our sources that the ramifications of Iron Man's story throughout the Infinity Saga will be a critical factor in these projects. This includes the aftermath of some of his notorious villains, such as Obadiah Stane, Justin Hammer, and Ultron. 
I mean, hey, I'm, I like I like the Alabama. And I mean, I don't know. I feel like Ultron was very underused in the uh, Avengers movie, so it'd be pretty fun to see him come back. Yeah. Somewhere. Um. Okay. This next section is the controversial section. Uh oh. Um, for a lot of people. Young Avengers and the next generation in the MCU. Uh, okay. Something Marvel has been focused on developing is the next generation of heroes in the MCU across several titles. The goal of this arc will be to develop a Young Avengers film. This was already teased at the end of the Marvels when Kamala Khan sought out Kate Bishop and teased putting together a team of heroes of the relatively the same age. Multiple sources have already confirmed to us that we know who all the, the members of the team will be, or most of them. Um, Samala Khan. Okay. Um, Kate Bishop. So those two we knew. Cassie Lang, which we kind of knew. She hinted at that in the Marvels. I just hope she's written better. Um, America Chavez, Billy Maximoff, and Tommy Maximoff are expected to be a part of the uh, Young Avengers lineup. Some sources have mentioned other possible members, including Theodore Altman, who is that. Theodore. Oh. That, that's the guy in um Hulkley. Sorry. Okay, it's Hulkling. That's who Theodore Allman is. Um Axel Heimdallson, so Heimdall's son from Thor Love and Thunder. No, thank you. Um Riri Williams, so Ironheart. Eli Bradley, so Isaiah Bradley's grandson, who is oh, Okay. Yeah. And Scar are other ones that are possible members. However, these members in particular were only confirmed by some sources, not all. That's that section. Uh, the WandaVision story continues is the next one. WandaVision continues to make its mark among MCU fans as one of its most popular projects. Um, they struck gold with Jack Schaefer seeking to expand the story with several spinoff projects based on the events in Westview. These include the Agatha series and Vision Quest. Some sources have also mentioned a possible Billy Maximoff series in development stemming from the conclusion of Agatha. Wanda fans will be pleased to hear that our sources also confirmed to us that a Scarlet Witch movie is currently in development, seeking to tie together the story that started in WandaVision. There are, however, no other details about the plot of this movie at this time. Um, the next section is the one I'm most excited about. This is, well, kind of. This is The Rise of the Midnight Suns. All right. Uh, one corner of the MCU that Marvel is keen on exploring for these next few phases is the supernatural corner uh, of the universe. Projects like Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night, and WandaVision have already introduced some critical components for this corner of the world. Projects that will continue to explore this corner include Blade, Ironheart, Marvel Zombies, Moon Knight Season 2, Continuation of Werewolf by Night, and other unannounced projects. This arc aims to unite the heroes of the supernatural corner against a significant threat to humanity, giving rise to the Midnight Suns. Some sources have mentioned that Lilith or Mephisto have been considered for the big bads of this arc. One source has mentioned that the potential lineup for the Midnight Suns um, features Sorcerer Supreme Wong as one of the leaders of the team, alongside Mahershala Ali's Blade. Um, we also know that Werewolf by Night, Elsa Bloodstone, um... Moon Knight, and I believe I think that's all of them, if I'm remembering correctly, are the members of the team besides Blade and Hong. So that's a pretty stacked team. That is, that is, very, that is a big team. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. All right, next up is Deadpool 3 and the Age of Mutants. I'm pretty sure I mean, it's the second, third to last. Fourth to last, all right, third to last one. Um, okay, the mutants are finally on their way to the MCU next year, both on Disney Plus and on the big screen. First on the list will be X Men '97, set to release sometime around April to May of 2024. Direct sequel to the animated series. It's said to continue the events of the universe's iteration of the X Men following the conclusion of the original series. While the direct connection to the larger MCU remains unclear, sources indicate that these X Men will serve as the original reference for future iterations. Some examples include Charles Xavier and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Dr. Hank McCoy in the Marvels, both of which are inspired by the designs of the animated series. The series is also expected to run for multiple seasons, with the second season already being developed at the time of writing. Um, one of the most highly anticipated projects coming is Deadpool, the Deadpool and Wolverine film. 
That's what this, they're calling it. Uh, this has been teased as a multiversal road trip movie across several Marvel universes, which will ultimately cross over into the main 616 universe. In slash MCU. Uh, they won't just spoil what happens in the movie, but it's absolute certainty that the project will set the stage for what comes next for mutants in the MCU. Um, they said they can confirm that uh, mutants having a big role in the upcoming phase, and they'll be established in a more meaningful way before th before the conclusion of the saga. Um, some ideas include a mutants series on Disney Plus, focusing on individual stories for several mutants, kind of like What If. Um, or an X-Men film under the Marvel Studios brand, The Road, before Avengers Secret Wars. Um, so a uh, mutant show, each episode's about a different mutant. Yeah. Um, around like the world. It's, it's, it'll be like a... I think that's kind of cool. It's like, introduces mutants. Yeah, I like... yeah, I don't know. I'm some water. All this reading is is terrible. Like I ain't doing it. <laughs> um, and then uh, apparently an X Men film before Secret Wars. So we'll see about that. Um, according to one source, another idea has been tossed around involves an Avengers versus X Men film set between the members of the Six One Six Avengers and the X Men. However, it's still too early to discuss as the X Men have not yet made their way to the Six One Six universes just yet. Okay, Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you think that one Secret Wars thing is true? How we're gonna get like Iron Man, like a like a new actor for Iron Man and all that, or no? Well, that's the rumor that it's gonna be a reboot, and so it'll just start a universe with every character in it instead of just the Avengers. Yeah, it'll be like Lego Marvel superheroes. Oh. Hopefully not like two. That game sucked. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, Fantastic Four. Um, according to sources, the film has been described as a cosmic adventure with multiversal implications. This will make it one of the essential films in the saga as it will do a lot of heavy lifting regarding the concepts of the multiverse leading into Avengers Secret Wars. A clue? Study up on black holes, is what they said. Huh. Uh, fans can also look forward to the upcoming Wonder Man series. We hear from sources that the show could connect to the upcoming Shang-Chi sequel. There are other sequels that fans could also look forward to in the coming years, including Doctor Strange 3, Black Panther 3, Thor 5? I guess it just says Thor, so I'm just I'm adding the numbers after. Um, I guess It would be Thor, what, Thor 5? Thor yeah. 5. Yeah, Thor 5. Shang-Chi 2 and Eternals 2. And that's that. Uh, next, and it's the final section, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, titled Kang Currently on Standby. Uh, we could not conclude this article without addressing the elephant in the room, Kang the Conqueror. Following the guilty verdict of the trial of Jonathan Majors, Marvel Studios quickly dismissed Majors from his duties as Kang and his variants. We saw last saw Majors in the MCU with the release of Loki Season 2, in which he reprised his role as He Who Remains and portrayed Victor Timely. By the show's end, Loki had taken control of the multiverse and granted the multi created the multiversal tree, which allows infinite timelines to continuously expand and grow as a giant tree. Um, now, the bigger question is, as the TVA moves on, is where does that leave Kang and his variants, many of which are all gathered at Limbo in a place outside of time and space? How does Marvel intend to address Kang's absence? Marvel's plan for him is the equivalent of sweeping it under the rug. Marvel will instead focus on other storylines while they take their time to build up Kang in the multiverse again slowly behind the scenes. Some sources have even gone beyond that to state that Marvel doesn't intend to address him directly until we are practically near the end of the multiverse saga. Uh, sources state that there have been discussions and plans for other multiversal villains to step up to the plate in the upcoming phases. This is, of course, an attempt to take control of the multiversal-sized vacuum left in the absence of Kang the Conqueror and his variants. But make no mistake, for better or worse, Marvel will ultimately Marvel ultimately still intends to close out the saga with a Kang variant as their final villain. And that is the end of the article. I mean, that's... I mean, do you think it's possible for them to do that? I mean, I guess just a, a different actor. I mean, yeah, this is recast. Um, and I think it's smart focusing on these smaller stories and building that stuff up in the background on a random project here and there that really pushes that forward. 
I think that's smart. I think what I think I think there's hope for the future, <laughs> but I'm going to say that cautiously. Um, but yeah, this article. Okay. <laughs> Very cautious hope. Yeah. Um, move on. These next two are pretty quick. I'll just I'll go through them. The Agatha Show, which is, um, as we just read, is part of the whole WandaVision story, um, will be ep- eight, eight episodes long. And episode nine is set to be a special titled The Witch's Road. So there we go. The Witch's Road special presentation has been turned into an episode, a bonus episode for. Agatha, and apparently it's the most important episode. So. Uh, there's that. I, I mean, we will be watching. I, I mean, yeah. Um, okay, next. What if season three, um, I know three of the episodes, apparently. Um, one of them will be Surtur, um, the big fire monster from Thor Ragnarok, versus Avengers. Um, Strange, Wanda, Spider-Man, and Iron Man. The Hulk goes kaiju. That's all this says. Big, big Hulk. <laughs> yes, Big Hulk. <laughs> um, Red Guardian as the first Avenger. He will fight a Red Room controlled Bucky. Yes. So that's one of them. And another one is in an alternate alternate World War II. Hydra is much more powerful, which will cause Wakanda and Talokan to be involved in World War II. So just some Namor action. King T'Chaka. King T'Chaka. I, wonder if Na- I wonder if it would be Namor. It would be. Namor. Unless it would be Namor's dad. Shut up. I mean, Namor's yeah. dad. I don't know. Well, he didn't have a dad. Did he have a dad? No, he didn't have a dad. He was just like, he just like came, uh, was born from a god or whatever. I think. I don't remember. I don't know. It's been a while since I saw the movie. I need to rewatch it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. And that's the end of the Marvel news. A lot of, a lot of news for that, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, the article was the piece. It, yeah, oh yeah. I didn't even realize that article was even there. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I obviously just brought it up. Yeah. Uh, um, but, I, I'm assuming DC news is as crazy as the Marvel one. There are four pieces, uh, three pieces of DC news. Oh, I'm to that. <laughs> What, you just kick out a fourth one just now? No, um, no one of them is not a piece of news. I mean, it is, for, but for, not for us. Oh, uh, okay. Um, starting off with this, this is the one that's not news. Reminder, um, I, I, we still have not seen Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, but we will be reviewing that in an extra beef at the beginning of the year. So it's coming, but it won't be this week. Uh Apologies if anyone's looking forward to that. Okay. Uh, Zoom hates us. We're in the middle of talking and gave me a roundhouse kick to the face. Uh, but we're back. Um, I said Aquaman will be the beginning of the year review. Uh, yeah. That's you were going okay. to see it earlier, but your family said... They wanted to see Wonka, and then guess what? They didn't even gonna go see Wonka after that. Oh, they just just didn't go, or yeah, we just didn't go. I think we're going um, this upcoming week. Okay, I wonder how that is. They would they would be you a good eye hop and eat all the the Wonka the Wonka menu or whatever. I heard that like all like the fans of Wonka had a smile on like their face the whole time, and apparently he's like the perfect casting or something. So we'll see. I'm excited. But anyway, um, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about DC. Starting with uh, the DCU Arkham show. So this was a, um interesting uh, piece of news. Uh, we knew that an Arkham show was being made for the Batman universe. Um, so Matt Reeves universe. Yeah. And um, there's been talks about it. It's been like um, in the works for a while. Apparently um, it was originally a... Uh, uh, GCPD show, but then it turned into um, Arkham. Well, according to James Gunn, um, this took place after um, the that video was made uh, with James Gunn announcing all the new DC stuff. Um, he said he got a pitch. Him and Peter Safran got a pitch from Matt Reeves for that show, based in the DCU, 
So it is happening, and Matt Reeves will be producing it. Arkham show based in the DCU. Um, maybe before, um, uh, Brave and the Bold, which would make sense. I think this is it, interesting. Introduce his villains and introduce Batman's like history in this world before he shows up. Because obviously he already has Damien, so it's a lot has happened. He's oh, met yeah. all. I mean, so, it, 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 it could lead to some pretty interesting banter of like, yeah, one time, you know, Bat, uh, I ran into Batman one time and he, you know, he did this to me and you see like a, or, or like, you know, like some inmate, he has like, I I don't know, but it's just, you know, just hearing stories of how they even get there in the first place would be pretty cool. Yeah. And to what extent do you think villains will show up in this? Are you thinking like a certain a couple villains will be in it, but it won't be like all of them or will it be like, well, I, I think definitely mentions, men, definitely mentions of a lot of them. Um, are you saying like 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 what villains I think will show up in this show? Yeah. Um, like Joker. Do you think Joker is going to be in it? Um, whoever they are trying to get to be the first villain of the Batman of of the Brave and the Bold, obviously, I don't believe will be in the Arkham show. And I'm also pretty sure it's Rachel Ghoul. That's just me. Rachel Ghoul. Jeez. <laughs> I love it. Hey, this is my song. What was that, like a tweet or something? It was a meme. It was um, a meme. Ninja, Tur- Ninja Turtles. Or a racial ghoul. This it was, was Batman, to Batman talking about racial ghoul, and one of the turtles was like, racial ghoul? <laughs> he has... I don't know. I will, I'll tell you this, though. You'll be happy to hear this. I, I, I believe Riddler. I think Riddler's like a big contestant to be on the show. Oh my uh, gosh! Could you imagine what James Gunn's Riddler's like? Like I'm expecting, I I I hold James Gunn to a certain quality of projects. Is most comic movies he makes are super comic accurate. Yeah, and so, or at least to like the characters and the way they look and stuff. I'm pretty sure that these villain designs are going to be like, I'm talking like real accurate to like the old designs. So I'm thinking Penguin's going to have like the um, tuxedo. And um, no, not not the spandex. No, what the pen? I'm talking about penguin, not Riddler. Oh, penguin. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So like, penguin's gonna have the, that in the monocle, and he'll have his top big hat, beak nose. Yeah. Penguin, uh, yeah, top hat. I think penguin looks cooler with that. Yeah. Um, but like Riddler, I, I don't know if he'll have, I think he'll. They'll probably do spandex. Oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know if they do spandex for him. But like I'm talking right. characters like oh, oh. um uh, Mr. Freeze will probably look good and like all all kinds of stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it'll be very comic accurate. Um I, the... I can see a Joker. I I what I don't think Joker is the first villain. Joker's gonna be mentioned. Joker will or, be mentioned, or, but but do you think probably... well, do you think we get like flashbacks? Maybe we get to see a little bit of like Dr. Harleen Quinzel. Um. Uh, I mean, I I just feel like it'd be a bit like the, a bit the origins uh, of Arkham kind of thing. I mean, they could, but I mean, I don't. I mean, I think it's a. I think it'd be a bit overdone. Uh, I just there's so much you could do with an uh, Arkham Asylum show. Uh, I I think I would love to see um if there's anyone I'm interested in seeing it's uh Scarecrow. Yes, and, and... I do that. Which that is um. Kind of pertaining to a piece of news that I have here in a minute, ah, so which is way. also related to Arkham Asylum. Oh, okay. Um, I see if it's a that. I mean, I don't, I'm excited for the Arkham show. I'm, yeah, I'm glad Matt Reeves is on it. Yeah, yeah. producing yeah. it. So Matt Reeves is. People are upset about it, though. As everything, what? they always are. But um, there, people are thinking it's not a good idea for Matt Reeves to be working on the Batman universe as well as this. Batman universe, but I'm also thinking it's not. He's just producing the show, which is not like he's going to be controlling all. Of, he, James Gunn did say that uh, Matt Reeves will be doing some other stuff for them too, and people are upset about that. Yeah, as they, 
I mean, you said that as they always are. So I can't yeah. say why, because it's not like it's not they, like he makes bad stuff or it's gonna like mess the quality of it up. I mean, like if anything, like, he's it's gonna be more. It's gonna be like actual comic book Batman or, done by Matt Reeves. And it's not like James Gunn asked Matt Reeves if he wanted to do it. And if he'd be comfortable doing that, and then Matt Reeves is all like, no, but I guess I don't have a choice. Yeah, Matt Reeves <laughs> uh, brought it to them as yeah. a DCU show. And they yeah, Matt Reeves is the one I did it. So if he, I mean, if he feels confident, then why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, and this might sucks, be, this, this show might have become beside, well, it's kind of rough because I'm excited for all of it, but like Booster Gold and Lanterns are my two most, like, just paid shows, but this might be my number three or four. I guess Creature Commandos. I forgot mm. about that. That's next. That's literally next year. Um, uh, speaking of Creature Commandos, though, and this moves on to my next piece of news here. Um, it is officially releasing in late 2024 on mass. Um, so it's probably going to be fall. I wish that means it'll be releasing probably around the same time as Penguin. Sounds about sounds about right. Um, I'm yeah. I, I'm probably that penguin show more than uh, anything else. Well, speaking of penguin, the penguin series will reportedly feature Jonathan Crane in Arkham Asylum. He will be interacting with Kristen Milioti, Sophia Falcone, and an actor has already been cast. Who do you? Th- I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if, oh. I don't care. Really. Scarecrow is a peak villain. Scarecrow's a really good villain. Scarecrow, Scarecrow's so good. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I think the idea of him interests me more than how he ends up being sometimes. Um, true. But, but like, I think what really got me into him, and I'd say a lot of people, is Arkham Asylum. You know, if you know, you know. Well, I it wasn't Arkham Asylum for me. I mean, it was cool in Arkham Asylum, and I know you're gonna. This is a hot take, I guess. For some reason, but I guess you get the Ang Lee hot take. I get this hot take. Um, what really yeah, well, got me into him and really yeah. solidified him as like, oh yeah, this guy's an actual threat was Arkham Knight. Arkham, oh. I was like, yeah, wait, this guy is a big problem. Oh well, yeah, I guess everyone has their little cute. Yeah, you can't. You have to agree that they actually made Scarecrow a threat in that game. Oh, like yeah, he was no, literally no. doing like destroy the whole city basically. No, yeah, I just thought, I just, I don't know. Those segments in Arkham Asylum are so incredible. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, watch your playthrough of when you do the third, the third and final encounter. I mean, in the game. I mean, back when like. You know, trolling someone in a game was not that common. Like, it makes it look like your game froze or something. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, uh, that's like, cool. I just think I and plus I I really like the design of Arkham Knight Scarecrow. It's just me. I like like the hood on him and stuff. I think it makes well, him look creep. It makes him look creepier to me. I, I I think I agree with. I wish he had that design. But I wish he had the uh, the light up eyes still. Yeah. Um, okay. Plus, I like like the mask. You could like see his face underneath it. Yeah. And so it made like because his face is like horribly scarred, what from Killer Croc or whatever. Do you, do you believe Sar- Scarecrow should carry a scythe with him all the time? Um, no, but I think he should fight with it at one point. In yeah. like what, what he's in, I think he could. I think that would be cool. Oh yeah. But I, I still stand by what I think that a Scarecrow horror movie needs to happen. And we know a Scarecrow project is being made for the, the Batman universe. So I think it's a movie, too. So I hope it's a horror movie. Oh, yeah. So. That is what we need. I've always yeah. had the dream if I could make a Scarecrow movie, I make it based in Arkham Asylum. There's a breakout. And um, he's, at this point, not many big villains are locked up. Yeah, and who are locked up? Uh, Scarecrow basically takes control, and he kills them. And you have this entire, basically abandoned at this point, mental hospital, 
And Batman is dealing with some problem out in the city, and he can't make it to Arkham. And so the police have to do something about it. <laughs> so you have like two, three cops as the main characters. They get locked in the asylum. Scarecrow's in there. Just have this go crazy. Just, just go wild with this. Yeah. And that's like, I would literally make that movie. If I could like pitch it to James Gunn, and he said yes. <laughs> James like, Gunn said yes to me. Because I really, that, that would be such a good movie. And you literally have to make it like terrifying. You have to. Yeah. I mean, and have it, I mean, mess with your mind on that, on that too. Yeah. Where, where I mean, there's no possible way you could. I just, I love it, man. I love, I love, I love Scarecrow. So good. He's a good villain. Um, okay. Let's, uh, See what's next here. Uh, nothing. So we have gaming next. Okay. Let's see the DC news. Um, here's a commercial because we didn't give you one. After oh, I'll take one. What does it take to be a hero? Strength. Also, you need a really cool costume. It's time to hang out, join the fight, and hero up. Marvel's Superhero Squad Online. You can play for free now at HeroUp.com. Rated everyone 10 and up. Ask parents permission before going online. Some features require paid membership. All right, we're back. Welcome back. Um, oof. I, I, I'd say, here, do you want to start off with Suicide Squad? That's or? what I was going to do, yeah. Okay, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so before we get into the biggest Suicide Squad thing, let's talk about it. there was an Insiders episode that came out, episode two of Suicide Squad Insider. Um, I it, it was good. It focused more on um the support squad. Uh, so Ivy who was in the game that was confirmed. Um, Toy Man, Penguin. Uh, is there more? I think that's it. Um, no, no. no. There's more. I can't remember that one girl's name is. Uh... Oh, Hack. Yeah, sorry. Her too. Um, yeah, so it focuses on the support squads, the people you get um, weapon upgrades and stuff from. Traversal mods and stuff like that. Um, they really focused on that mostly. Uh, I, 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 was, I think the most interesting thing to me is the gun customization. There's a lot you can do to it. Oh, yeah. Obviously, traversal mods as well, because I mean, I would like that, but um, the gun customization looked pretty crazy. I mean, you can do a lot. I absolutely love that um, photo <laughs> of um, <laughs> it, or it showed like the three different gun types that uh, Deadshot had. Yeah, and it, like it's just the size of it was just completely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it looked good. Um, I don't remember necessarily everything that was in it. I but I am most excited for next episode. Um, because they did confirm at the end that next episode is based on post-launch, um, and in-game content as well as the future. Um, so the whole live service element. Yeah. Um, and I'm most excited for that. Hear about the DLC, how they're going to do it, um, and what they're adding to the game after. Ooh. Um. And the way they made it sound, they are adding different places, like locations in the game. Oh, really? It's the way it made it sound. But I'm not 100% sure. Um, they, had, they had the cast in there um, talking about it. Deborah Wilson. Um, talk about it, like, Deborah Wilson, she plays Seer in the Jedi games, and she plays a baller in this, and um, some other stuff. Um, that we're not going to talk about. Yeah. Um, talk about. I've seen interviews with her, and um, uh, like different like stuff. But she's what a character. I think she is. What, what, she's such like, like a like energetic human being. Is she really? Yes. Like I would love to have her on this podcast. 
here, send me, send me whatever you saw, and I'll have to, I have to watch her. Yeah, she's so uh, like. There's this one guy. She was doing an interview with him, and the guy was going to do a giveaway on his channel. And he asked her if she would like to do it, and she said yes. And then she immediately went into Amanda Waller character without him even asking, and like telling the people they better um, sign up for the giveaway, or um, she's going to show up to their house and like do it. And there was lots of stuff. And she's like, I don't know. She's just so fun to watch. Like, like oh, yeah. just interact let, with people. Let, 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 let's do. Let's. Uh, let... Let's definitely get her on here, then. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll have to send you something if I can find it a little bit. But um, let's talk about... That was the Insider episode. There wasn't really too much to break down, but... um, I mean, it was a lot of interesting stuff. Um, though, I actually do want to talk about... um, It's not afflictions. It's, afflictions are interesting, though. They revealed those. They're um, think, mods for guns. And each one's an element. So, like, ice, fire, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I, like, and each one has pros and cons to it. So you really kind of got to weigh which, like, who you're, what your team's using, what you're using. Because ice, you freeze all the enemies in place. They're inv- they're v- invulnerable to melee damage, but they can be shot. But they won't drop ammo. Oh. But fire, the fire one. Um. What did it say? Was it poison? I can't remember. It was one of the two. Another one. Um. You're not. You can't get shields from them, but they're easier to kill. And so it's like, like, oh, do I want to do this? But like, there's also this. So like, should I do this one or should I choose another? One? It's like you gotta kind of strategize a little bit. Yeah. So that's afflictions, and each member of your squad can have one. So you can have basically up to four afflictions for the whole squad. Um, I think there are four. Um. And then there was also um, weapon things where like each one's themed around a different villain. So you have um, black mask themed weapon uh, stuff and Bane, and there's like one called Bane's Rage where it like builds up strength as you use it or something. I can't remember, but um, yeah, I, I have to rewatch it. I don't remember all the terms. Uh, yeah, the okay. Let's get on to the big. The big thing, uh, which is these. I mean, I, well, I guess I can say leaps. Um, this yeah. isn't Insomniac yet. We're not talking about Insomniac. Still, so that's squad. Oh, okay. So um, I was like, do you really want to use the word leaps for the Insomniac thing? Because that 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 was outright stolen. It's not because that's not a leap. It's an attack. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Someone came out on uh, Reddit, I think it was, and yeah. basically laid out the whole this whole plot, and they had leaked scene dialogue and pictures and all stuff. Yeah. Um, I looked at all of it. I don't remember any of the plot stuff, which I'm kind of happy. Even if it was true, that's probably a good thing that I didn't remember it, because like I couldn't recall anything other than like a couple things. Yes. Yeah, but um. So this sweeps the internet, and right, and some of you are probably aware of this. Um, people immediately started bashing on the game. I'm talking using Kevin Conroy to bash on the game too. Um, part of the leak stated that Batman gets shot, or it, it said gets mutilated by Harley Quinn. Um, well, I'm happy to report that that is not the case. Um, and Miller, so the guy who follow for this stuff he also does a lot of avengers stuff he uh he's he's been very vocal about this is complete misinformation um this is not at all what the story is like it's just like for all intents and purposes a, a bastardization of this for the stories um yeah and the way he described it is um imagine before arkham knight comes out People leak scenes of Barbara shooting herself. Arkham Knight, there's a scene where Arkham Knight, um, his face was um, the Joker at one point in the game. It was like a hallucination. Imagine those leaks. Yeah. Imagine what the public opinion on that game would be. Even though that's not what actually happens. And we know that. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. He, he said that's essentially what this is. Oh. 
Huh. Um, and the le- guy who created the leak came out and said that it was. Let me read what he said. He even uh, said like, "Yeah, I'm like pretty much I made it up." Yeah. Um. Well, he's made most of it up. Let me find it here. Here it is. He said, reposting this on behalf of the original leaker who doesn't have a Reddit account. Um, I'm the person who wrote the original leak, which the person reposted to the subreddit along with the audio. I can confirm pretty much everything Miller is saying about the leak being misleading is correct. The story summary is an awful, awful bastardized retelling of the story, which I will regret writing. As Miller has said, the leak is based entirely off of story cutscenes, which I found in the game files. At the time, my method of finding these cutscenes was awful, so the ones I was listening to were incomplete or out of context. Furthermore, I skimmed through these cutscenes and didn't pay close attention. I then recited it the next day in a private Discord server, which is why I put so little effort into the summary. The general structure of the leak is correct, and most of the major events do happen. However, a lot of the details declared as fact were speculation on my part, or me just trying to fill in gaps of my own knowledge. For example, the leak that says Harley mutilates Batman, but that, but that doesn't happen. She just suggested it in some dialogue. The leak also says they have a contest over who kills Batman. That never happened. The leak also says they find Tim Drake's corpse in the Batcave. That isn't confirmed, just implied by the cutscene when they find a Batman recording. Superman doesn't go to Krypton because it's destroyed. I also completely omitted certain plot lines such as Earth 2 Luther hiding from Earth 1 Waller. Additionally, since the leak was based off of cutscenes from the main story, it is missing stuff that happens in the post-game Season 0 content, as well as the upcoming DLC seasons. Since writing this leak, I found out something major which happens in one of the post-game story contents, which completely recontextualizes the entire story of the game. I won't spoil what that is since I've already ruined enough of the game's surprises. I should have written this weeks ago when the story summary first got reposted here, but when people started debunking it for its obvious faults, I chose not to. I'm sorry for the completely mischaracterizing the game's story. It was not my intention to crap on this game's story, as I love Arkham, but that has certainly been the effect of this leak. If you read the leak, please disregard everything about it, because while some of it is true, enough is wrong that is just overall misinformation. I sound like a get-out-of-jail-free card. If you ask me, but whatever. Whatever. It just sounds weird, like, because he comes out and says, yeah, it's the leak. Uh, I know exactly. I don't know. I don't know if I fully trust what he said, but whatever. What do you mean? Uh, What? Well, what I mean is, like... You think the leak's real? No, no, I'm saying, like, how he was kind of acting like, oh, I wasn't really... I wasn't really trying to. I, I was... personally, well, we do know that he is some kind of leaker because he's he got cutscene audio. Um, well, yeah, well, I feel like he is a leaker, but I feel like he tried to like somewhat kind of purposely bring it up higher than what it was. Does that does that make sense? You think that he tried to ruin the game's reputation? Everything. No, no, not like the reputation I'm of confused. the game. Well, not ruin the reputation of the game, but like, uh, just, just you know, I guess that's what I'm saying. I, I would say he just kind of came up with a bunch of that stuff on the spot. Like he kind of knows what kind of happens. Yeah, happens, but he kind of. And just... Miller says that a lot of the dialogue includes people lying, which also brought me to a theory, which I told you about, which I'm yeah. pretty sure because I listened to the cutscene audio. Of the supposed Batman death, um, which it wasn't in the audio, but um, I'm not gonna like say what happens in it. But in that, it I really think that they're gonna make Waller and Brainiac believe they killed the Justice League, and which they're really not going to. They're gonna see if they can save them. Yeah, because I mean that sounds like a, what they would do for a story anyway. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, it's it's a lot. The public, the people were bashing on the game, and it was insane. Um, as you've probably seen if you're on Twitter or Instagram or anything. Um, but I do want to point out all the people that were bashing on it. Once this came out that it was debunked, they deleted all their posts and they haven't said anything since. Yeah, well, it, just, it just shows you. It's, I, I trust Rocksteady to not ruin their universe. <laughs> Yeah, because they would not have jobs without it. Oh, yeah. So even the thought of like, and granted, people were like, "How dare you 
kill Batman so disrespectful to Kevin Conroy. Even if Batman did die. Kevin obviously, first off, was still alive when this game was made. Oh yeah. And so they would not have known that. And second, he obviously liked the script enough script enough to come back. Yeah, be interested in it, yeah. So, I mean, it's not disrespectful if he if he himself wanted to be in it. But anyway, that's just that. Um I think it's I think people acted incredibly um I get that what it was in the quote unquote leap um was while it was fake, it was pretty awful stuff, like twelve brainiacs at the end of the like the end of the game. That's what it was. That's what it said. And that's stupid. No that is definitely I guarantee that's definitely not what they're gonna do. <laughs> that's what it is. That's the end game stuff. See see next week. Um <laughs> Um, I think it, people acted incredibly, incredibly selfish, is what I think. Um, and I get it. I get why they're mad, but there's no reason to, like, death threats to the studio. I'm talking. They said they were gonna bomb the studio and all this stuff. There is absolutely no oh, really? like some of the people that I have that I saw talking about that. Like, I almost like want to say that. I hope I wish that was the story of the game because you deserve that after what you just said. I uh, know you deserve because, to get that. <laughs> yeah, it's some awful, terrible stuff, and more terrible stuff is also happening on the Marvel side of things and gaming, which I guess leads into our next topic here. Uh, th- uh-huh. This here was the straw that broke the camel's back. Of um, oh yeah, let's do a let's do a bonus episode this week. Because we had this along with the Jonathan Majors uh, trial, trial conclusion, and it's, I mean, they, they, uh, what do you think is more insane? I mean, I'd say this. I think the that, gaming stuff is more. Yeah, I, I, uh, I agree. What mm-hmm. day was, what day did this happen? Tuesday? Yeah, I think it was Sunday. No, because I was at work when all that was Well, going. hold on. It was a week from... It gave him what, what, two weeks or a week? Yeah, a week. Um, so long the uh, the people gave. I can't remember exactly what day it was. Maybe Monday. I, it I, was I, earlier this week. I, I let's go with uh Monday night, Monday night midnight. Yeah, it was late. So Tuesday at midnight. Um, because I know as soon as it hit midnight, that's when it started going through. Yeah. It was over what a terabyte? Yes, over a terabyte. Yeah. Yeah, over a terabyte of stolen information at Insomniac Games. Uh Insomniac Games, if you don't know, uh made Marvel Spider Man one, two, Marvel Spider Man Morales, and, and really popular for the Ratchet and Clank games they've yeah. done. Um I don't know how it happened. Somebody just hacked their systems and th- what what do they want two two million dollars? Yeah, and they Sony and the Samyak did not budge. They did not budge. Uh, and when that in return, the guys leaked out over a terabyte of data. Um, out of respect for Insomniac, we won't go into detail of what was uh, leaked. We've and seen all, everything. <laughs> we had, yeah. Um, and it really wasn't like too spoilery. I didn't read the plot. I yeah, I that. The plot. And it wasn't even uh, me. I wasn't even trying to even look. I just can't. I mean, you when can't. It, you couldn't not. I mean, there's no. It. I mean, my feed was just covered. And yeah. we saw. Know, we we. I mean, there with, was. There was stuff like gameplay, castings, plot leak, like, um, <laughs> stuff like that, and, um, I mean, I I'm not gonna say what's in it, like what it looked like. What I'm gonna like, I want to point out the fact that this is a unreleased game, and people were hating on it for it looking bad. Yeah, so like that was just pre, sit and think about that. Pre alpha, <laughs> and and it didn't even. It's not even the fact that, and I can't. I guess I can say this. It's not even the fact that it didn't even look bad. It did it. No, it looked great. <laughs> yeah, it looked, I, that like let them cook. That's all I'm. Saying. 
Yeah, Larry Cook, exactly. I mean, Spider looks fantastic. And I, I want to bet that game somehow looked worse than that pre alpha. Yeah. But other things that were leaked in this were personal info from employees and uh, any voice actors. So some of Yuri's stuff got leaked. Yeah. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know. I do. I yeah. I do remember the Yuri stuff. Okay. Yeah. I had seen that. I'm saying I remember. Yeah. He, he. It was rumored that he was. He was in that. He was going to be in that whole. Uh, uh, spread misinformation. No, holy crap! The uh, with like the English. first one. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, ooh, Lord, can't even talk for a minute. Um. Yeah. Uh, but along with that, there was also leaks of their release schedule up until. 2032. Yeah, which I don't want to go into. No. I, in case you haven't heard, we won't, we're not going to say what that was about. Yeah. But big, big, big thing was Wolverine. Uh, you know, it, it sucks. I, I don't know. It, it's a real terrible thing all around. There's nothing good with it. Um, I think that um, I mean, the leaker who leaked GTA 6 got um, a year. Oh, no, a year. Um, a uh, life, uh, life, lifetime in a hospital, but it's just like basically meant to, they got put in a mental hospital, yeah. Um, to, because they're considered a danger, and that was and, a leak, not yeah. stolen. <laughs> so, this is, I hope, I hope that this guy gets what's coming. How about this? Those bombs you're gonna throw at Rocksteady, throw it at this, throw, guy's the, house. throw this guy, yeah. yeah, throw at this guy's house, and um. um they they are investigating. They we didn't hear nothing from it. This went on from two, midnight Tuesday night mm-hmm. till I mean it's still going on now. It's still out there. I mean it's out there. It's out there. But we yeah. didn't hear a word from Insomniac. And then there there was rumors popping up about stuff, a bunch of stuff getting to be canceled, such as Wolverine. That was a rumor for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I'd say after this tweet they did on Friday, that kind of shuts that down. Um, yeah. but uh, here I'll read the tweet now. If unless you want to throw something out there, I, um, I think that I tweeted this, um, and I believe it. Uh, we don't deserve video games. We do not. <laughs> like uh, this, the the this type of like hard work that it takes to go into stuff, and like them, I know. I already you already know they were so excited to be able to reveal this game. And to, right. for it to be revealed in this way is yeah. just... It's, it's a shame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. It, it's, a, it's a real shame. Uh, tweet was just, like, essentially just a... I don't know what they were to, but they just posted a picture. Do you want me to find... you want me to look at it? Or... Yeah, well, I, I I just have the photo saved of oh. what was there. I'll yeah. have the actual tweet. I like... Uh, oh, okay, here we go. I got the tweet right here. It said, uh, an update regarding Sonic and Marvel's Wolverine. That's all I said. And the tweet and the picture said, thank you for your out uh, outpouring of compassion uh, and unwavering support. It's deeply appreciated. You know, with <laughs> all the goodies of the heart. Uh, we're both saddened and angered about the recent criminal cyber hack on our studio and the emotional to- toll it's taken on our dev team. We have focused uh, inwardly for the last several days to support each other. We are aware that stolen data includes personal info belonging to our employees, former employees, and independent contractors. It also includes early development details about Marvel's Wolverine for PlayStation 5. We continue working quickly to determine what data was impacted. This experience has been extremely distressing for us. Uh, yeah. Like, so, they, they I, I, leaks whole, in general suck, but if you're going to leak a company, leak a company that deserves it. Leak it, yeah. Like EA or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the right to do, but... Or Microsoft <laughs> Studio, sorry. I mean, they, um... They were they at Microsoft. Uh... Yeah, and, and bring up this point too. It wasn't only Insomniac stuff got got leaked out. Personal Sony information and yeah. other people's games, such as uh, concept art for uh, for Blue Point's next game. Oh, and really? Man, yeah. I didn't even know yeah. that. 
Can it's we totally... talk about the canceled game? Yeah. The canceled one? Yes. Uh because it's canceled. Uh, it, yeah, it's canceled. I I, mean, I guess we could say, we talk mention it for a minute here. I'll let you. Well, we kind of did mention. Did we mention that last week? No, we didn't. Well, yeah, yeah we, we did. There were rumors we, going around last week, right? Yeah, ru- rumors going around last week were rumors of it, something like that happening. Yeah. Yeah, of a Spider Verse game made by them, and there was concept art that leaked to that, and it looked kind of cool. A, bar, a bunch of it, but yeah, so I was, I don't know if I would have really art. liked it. But it looked interesting. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really want to touch on. It. I'm kind of nervous to talk about it. Well, it, it, it's yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into it. I'm so, I you know, just out of one out of respect to just, I'm just nervous. I don't want to get a because Wolverine, a dev, whole like the whole playable thing was on like a dev thing that you download on your computer. But yeah, the, uh, there was rumors that it was on Xbox as well, but apparently that was fake. Yeah, that was fake. Someone just made that up. And I mean, we don't. We definitely don't encourage it. People were downloading it, and they were getting DMCA'd. Oh yeah. For it. it just don't it's, don't it's, download it if you get if you find access to it. It's just not. Yeah. Worth it. I, I mean, we we. I mean, at least I do. I recommend you report whatever you found it from. <laughs> you know, yeah. But but here I'll read the, the last two paragraphs of this. And then we'll... All right, we have one minute and fifty seconds. Oh, well, we're going to start doing any crap. <laughs> uh, I'll have to read it, Tom. Um, okay, this is, we'll start a meeting. We'll just talk for a minute. Um, yeah, it's... It's like... It's terrible. Yeah. Or it's I, what it is. I just, like, I, there's, like, no words, really. Um, I, I am a little strange, because, I mean, I, I figured... I mean, sometimes people will just bluff... Say like, yeah, we'd have your, we have some personal info. That's what it. I think Sony thought it was, because it's happened before. Remember the data leak with, um, there's been data leaks before. They're like, you pay us money and we won't leak this, and they don't do it, and I think comes from it. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd, I'd say when, when it definitely involves personal info, to take it very seriously. I'm sure they did, but yeah, it is kind of weird. Like, oh, I see this personal, like. You know, obviously, you don't want the game to be out, but uh, when it comes to your personal employees' personal data, I, I mean, that should be priority. You know, it's like here, let's make sure. But I'm, I, I, I assume they didn't know fully, but yeah. it is. Um. Okay. Well, we have less than a minute in the meeting. Um, we're gonna end it real quick, and then we're gonna come back. We'll talk about. We'll finish off talking about. Uh. Insomniac stuff, and then talk about the future of comic book burrito. That's where we do that. Um, all right, BRB. Um, yeah, definitely a shame. Um, uh, shame, shame on people that did do this. I'll read this last two paragraphs, then we'll uh, we'll have it all out. Um, uh, well, everyone to enjoy the game, games we developed as intended as as our players deserve. However, like Logan, Insomniac is resilient. Marvel's Wolverine continues its plan. This game is an is an early production and will no doubt great greatly evolve throughout development, as do all of our plans. Oh, well, we appreciate everyone's enthusiasm. We will share official information about Marvel's Wolverine. When the time is right, I'll be off on behalf of everyone at Insomniac. Thank you for your ongoing support during this challenging time. Um, was that that was the end of the? That was the end of the paragraph. Or yeah, yeah, the summary. Um, yeah, definitely. That that lot was great. Like Logan, we are resilient. It's just like, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a good line. Um, I there was actually one other piece of news that I forgot to mention. Um, and this is for gaming, and it comes from James Gunn. Um, someone asked him if the Arkhamverse was over after um Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, and he said there's no plans of it ending. 
So yeah, it's very very exciting. And Miller says that he can't say talk about that without spoiling the game. So uh, I wonder if at the end of the game it'll hit towards the song. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. But um, I thought I'd throw that in there. I forgot about it. Um, okay, so that's all the news for today. Um, there's one last thing we have to do, which is kind of a uh, sort of look back on 2022 for the podcast as a whole, as well as um, a look forward to next year and the things that we'll be doing then. Um, um, I mean, I, I, I like the look back of uh, us tra- getting ready to get monetized. Our uh, subscriber count went up and our uh, view hours and people went up a bunch. But, so I am very, uh, you know, New Year's so uh, you also, you know, stuff you want to have a goal of. Uh, I'd, I like to have a goal of uh, us getting paid pretty decently off YouTube and uh, 2,000 subscribers. Go go beyond that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's um, a little news resolution of ours. For a look back, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to look in at, I'm going I'm to talk about like, I mean, the beginning of the year. Yeah, we had the Arkham Files season two. Um, and I mean, we we went that through that show, and now we're coming up on the final season of the Arkham Files. Um, in you know, a couple weeks, and um, so I'm very excited for that. Um, obviously, Game Awards and stuff went well this year. We had a few live streams, hundredth episode. We passed hundred episodes. Um, pretty sure we had our first episode to hit. A thousand this year, I believe. Thousand yeah, years. yeah, yep, that is correct. Um, and so a lot of cool stuff, a lot of big stuff happened this year. Um, next year though, is what I really want to talk about. We got a lot of stuff coming. I I know I have a lot of stuff planned for the show. We both have one big thing in general that I guess we can actually announce. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'll um, let you do the honors. Oh okay. Uh, well, starting off. Um, once we get back from break, hope we don't know if it'll be exactly when we get back from break, or maybe it'll be a couple weeks. We don't know yet. Um, we are coming back to the podcast, obviously, but we're gonna do it differently. We're finally, gonna get to see our gorgeous faces. So um, we'll be officially recording in, um, well, we call it just the podcast room, but I guess we could give it a name at some point. Studio room, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Bat cave or something. I don't know. The bat um, cave. Uh, but we'll officially be recording in there. Um, we will some setting up that has to be done with that, but um, you can definitely look forward to it. Um, for the podcast next year. Uh, that's one thing. Another would be obviously the Arkham Files season three. I mentioned that. Um, January eleventh will be the final season. May or may not set something up. And uh, no more details on that. Uh, Twitch streams. Let's talk about that for a second. We are we have a Twitch channel. We actually have one follower on there, even though we've never done anything ever. There we go. Um, but um, I'm officially going to try try at some point next year to start Twitch streams for the podcast. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. But speaking of streaming, before we get to Twitch streams, YouTube streams are going to continue. And I have a capture card. I've tried it out. Make sure Landon sounded good on there. He does. Yeah. So we'll officially be able to... I'm going to have a, a camera set up and everything. Officially be able to have face cam on my streams as well as duo streams. So we can hit, but we can hear Landon well, finally. Oh, yeah. Because we, definitely, I, I, we, we you always wanted to do streams together more, but it was just like, I sounded horrible. You can hear me. So... Yeah. Now, now we got that. I mean, in fact, you hear me so good during the test, we couldn't even get you to <laughs> get any of your stuff going. My, my went fun. But I managed to get it going um, using my, I have to use the podcast microphone. Yeah. Um, yeah, God. yeah. But that is uh, some of the big stuff. Obviously, I mean, there's however many live streams we do next year, um, game awards, uh, uh, stuff like that. Um, you got a lot of stuff to look forward to there. Uh, and hopefully, maybe some special guests that 
I'm going to inquire about. Oh yes. Um, but yeah, really, that's that's all. We, lot we got a lot we have to look forward to next year. Um, granted, there's not many movies coming out next year, so it might be short a big year short on news. We'll have to see. Um, if it is, we'll just figure out something to keep you guys entertained. But oh yeah, agreed. With that, I guess we go ahead and wrap up 2023 comic book burrito. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for this episode, bonus episode, if it, as you will. Um, mm-hmm. we weren't gonna do another episode. We're supposed to be on Christmas break, but uh, too much stuff happened. Yeah, but it is to not wait for us. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're officially going on break now. Um, we'll be back. Let me check the exact date so I can go and tell you that. Um, we will be back on January fifteenth. Be the um, next episode. Uh, January eleventh, obviously, will be the Arkham Files. Um, well, we could do. It depends. We could do that episode fifteenth, or we could do the Monday before the Arkham Files, which would be the eighth. Um, I think I'll do the I think fifteenth works. Um, yeah. so yeah, we'll be back January fifteenth, um, with more podcast episodes. Arkham Files January eleventh. Make sure you check that out. Um, check out the trailer. It's up on YouTube right now. It'll be a while to make it, so please watch it. Um, and yeah, um, I don't know if you have any streams. Um, I am. I, mean, I am going back to doing Spider Man again right after uh, the day after Christmas, Tuesday, the twenty six. Um, uh, had to get a bunch of stuff together where I didn't have time to stream at all. So my deepest yeah. apologies on that. But my plan is to currently do all Spider Man two before end uh, end of the year. Then in January, start off doing a uh, Final Fantasy seven, the uh, original game. They do remake in February, and then at the end of February, go with uh, uh, rebirth. That's gotcha. that's my current plan for the moment. Nice. Um, yeah, I um I will post about my streams start that would start back at the beginning of January as well. Um, I'll post about what games we should be doing. Get a right. consensus among the the masses. Um. Yeah, if you have any questions, comments, corrections, or concerns, you can contact me on Instagram at DarienH4404. That's D-A-R-I-E-N-H-4404. Or on Instagram at the Comic Book Burrito underscore official. Um, on Facebook, the Comic Book Burrito, call an official page, and Twitter at the CB Burrito. I'm always posting stuff on all the platforms, whether it be on a story or um, just a random drama tweet about some kind of drama going on. But I did want to plug one thing. This is quick. Yes. Um, if you are following us and you happen to be somebody that we follow back, then I suggest looking at um, even on my account, my normal Jaren H444, at the message notes that I put on there because it's not just personal music stuff. It's related to things. And you might be able to get some hints from it. If you pay attention. Yes. That's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, contact me at spider underscore landing on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Very interactive on all three platforms. Uh, coming over, we'll rain hell on whoever hacked Insomniac Games. Yeah. And with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we will catch you in in a year. Bye, guys. See ya. Excelsior!